Hey, my name is Jonathan Hedel, and I make music as Pink Buddha. And welcome to Force Fridays, where we look at some tips and tricks for how you can better use the Force. If you've missed the other videos in the series, click on this link up here to take you to the playlist. And if this is something you don't want to miss out in the future, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notifications to get the next one when it comes out. Today we're going to look at four different ways that I use to make my drum racks more expressive. The first method we're going to look at is how you can use a filter. I have loaded onto these pads some Vermona DRM samples. They sound like this. Now, these samples sound really good. They're a good starting point. But here's the thing. The human ear is extremely attuned to repetition. And when we hear the same sounds over and over again, we get tired of them very quickly. And the only thing that's happening on these samples when I load them in here is that there's changes in the velocity based upon how hard I hit it. But beyond that, there's not really any nuance that happens the harder I hit it or the softer I hit it besides the volume changing. And here's how you can use a filter to add some more nuance. First of all, you're going to need to make sure that you're on track edit. So I'm pushing menu and then track edit. And we want to go to where it says filter and envelope. Now for starters, I want to make some changes that are going to affect all the pads instead of having to go through and change them one by one. You can always go back and adjust the individual pads if you want to have some different nuance for, let's say, the bass drum versus the snare drum. But I want to go to this icon in the upper right hand corner here and select all pads instead of current pad. That way that any changes I make are going to affect everything. So here's what I like to do. I like to put a low pass filter on all the pads and have the velocity affected so that the louder that I play the pads, the more that it opens up the filter and the softer that I play them, the more that the sound ends up being a little bit more muffled. And to my ear, this helps the drums end up sounding more realistic, similar to if you were using a real drummer, and the harder they hit their drums, the more the transients are going to poke through in your mix. So if you look at the screen, we're going to need to take this cutoff down to approximately, I don't know, I usually do it about 30%. Pretty muffled. Maybe make that a little higher. I want it to kind of come through. Maybe the hi hats would be different, but. Okay. Then you want to go to modulation sources and where it says velocity equals the filter. And I'm going to turn that up the full way. So now when I hit the pad soft, the filter is going to be more cut off. Now you might not be able to hear the nuance in this video because you can't tell how hard I'm hitting the pads, but if we were to turn this off again, maybe you can hear the difference. At a lower volume, you hear more transients. If I put this down to, let's say, 23, that's a better example. Now this brings up a good point that if I'm going to be adding this cutoff filter that's affected by velocity, that I want to tone down the velocity sensitivity on the sample so that I'm not sort of making it too expressive because unless you're an expert drummer and you really have a lot of control on how hard you can hit these pads, which I'm not, I'm a piano player, I'm pretty good at it, but I'm, I'm not gonna be able to keep the sounds consistent enough so what I'm going to do is tone down the velocity sensitivity of each of the samples so that I'm not overdoing it. To change the velocity, you need to go to LFO Modulation, where it says Velocity Sensitivity, and I'm going to click on Amp, and I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. I'm going to go back to the filter, maybe tune that down a little bit more. OK, 
Okay, so that's feeling a little better to me. Now, when I hit it, maybe turn the velocity up a little bit more. When I hit it soft, it just gets more muffled instead of getting quieter. I think what sounds really nice is when you do those fast notes, which would be similar to someone on the drums. When they play with their sticks or they're using their foot pedal for the bass drum, to play really fast like that, you have to have a much lighter touch. So it's not going to have full attack, da, 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 which sounds really unrealistic to me. So this just adds some more roundness and nuance to the playing. Now I might make one more change here as well in that the hi-hat sound, if you hit it too soft and there's too much cutoff on the filter, it's not gonna sound at all. So what I would do is go back to the edit zones and go from all pads to the current one. And now we can adjust the individual pads instead of having to be on a macro level. And the hi-hat I might turn back up again There you go, I like that better. I'd like, I wanna be able to hear the hi-hat sound. Maybe I'd affect the, the clap as well, the snare. I really like the bass drum with more of that filter effect on it because of those. It keeps that really bright bass drum from getting over tiring and I can use it really on the accents when I want them to be. Anyways, you can go through each of the pads then and individually adjust the cutoff level based upon taste. The second way that I like to add more nuance and expression to my drums is by having the velocity affect the pitch a little bit. You need to go back to the LFO modulation page where it says velocity sensitivity and then pitch. Now, if I wanna do this to all the pads, let's do that to start with. I need to go back to this icon in the upper right hand corner. I click there and select all pads. Just a quick note, you really wanna make sure that you go back and forth between current and all. I have completely messed up my drum sets by forgetting that I was on all pads, thinking I was just affecting one and I was jacking up all of the work that I had just done on to create some nuance on all these. So be really careful when you're going back and forth between current and all pads. All right, now we're back on pitch. And I'm going to turn this up and show you the effect that that has. So the harder I'm hitting it, the more that the pitch is altering. Now this could be a really cool effect if you want to do that at an extreme level on some of these drums. I usually just do it in a very low degree, maybe just like six or seven. really subtle. Now you might prefer something more extreme. That's fine. Do whatever you feel like would work best for you. Now if you're doing it at a really low level like this, somewhere between 5 to 12, it's going to be extremely subtle. You might not even really notice a difference. But here's the thing that I mentioned before. The human ear is really sensitive to repetition. And if you make a slight change so that the velocity scaling is affecting the pitch slightly, it's gonna help your drums from feeling really tired and monotonous. Same thing applies here to what I was mentioning before, where I was just doing some macro changes to all the pads, but you could also easily go in here and change it back to single pads and then affect the pitch specifically to certain pads. And this again simulates to what it would be like when you're playing an actual drum set. If you hit the drums harder, it oftentimes pitches the drums up a little bit more because tightness to that head is going to 
impact the pitch. So the one thing to note about the force is that the pitch changes are only in the upward direction, meaning that you can only make it so that when you hit it harder, the pitch goes up. Um, you can't go in the opposite direction. There's no negative scaling on that, which is kind of a bummer because I really wish that you didn't have to just start low and only have the pitch go up if you hit it harder. It'd be nice if that was had a negative pitch scaling too, but it is what it is. The third way that I make my drums more expressive is by playing with the release time. I added some 808 samples here. And I'm going to show you specifically what I want to do to this bass drum. First of all, you need a sample that has a pretty long decay time, which this bass drum does on purpose, because I made this one. And we're going to make it so that when I hold the note, it holds out for the full length of it, and whenever I play it short, it's going to cut off. You do so by going to the LFO modulation page, want to make sure, as I mentioned before, that you are only affecting the current pad. So I go to the pads and I look and make sure that I'm on current and not all of them, which it already was. And you need to change this from where it says one shot to note on. Now, when I let go, the sample cuts off. That's obviously more extreme than I want it to be. So I'm going to need to go to filter envelope here on the amp envelope and I want to play with the release time of the pad so that when I hit the pad and I let go or I hit the pad momentarily, how much is it going to ring afterwards? Again, you can do this to taste. I like it to be somewhere around. That sounds pretty good to me, so at least it has some decay to it. Now, because my sustain is up all the way, whenever I hold the pad down, it has this really nice expressive quality too, because I can manually So the longer I hold that pad down, the more that it rings out. And that works great if you're playing the drums or if you're programming them because you can use a step sequencer to determine how long you want that note to ring out. And you can of course take the same approach to anything else. I could do it up here to the cymbal sound if I wanted to as well. I would click on, I would change that from one shot to note on, come back. And the symbol, I probably would want it to ring a little bit longer. Or I could also do that with this open hi-hat sound. Anyways, you get the idea. Lots of things you can do if you have longer samples. And if you're making your own, I definitely recommend making them um, as long as you can. Then you can always use the envelope to shorten them up a little bit if you want to have more nuance to them. And the last technique that I use to create more expressive drums is to layer samples based upon velocity, which means that I take a number of different samples and depending on how hard I hit the pad, it triggers different samples. Now this one takes a lot more work to set up, so I'm not gonna go into it in too much depth right now. I'm actually creating a separate video for it. If you're watching this at a later time and have already created it, click on this link up here to watch it. Here's a really quick preview for how I created this. I went into Ableton and I found some really good 808 samples. I put those in a track and I added a whole bunch of effects to them different types of distortion, preamps, EQ, compression, etc. And I divided them into three groups. This first set here, I played through each pad at maximum velocity. Then I went through the pads 
all the pads at a medium grade velocity and then all the pads at a low velocity. I then mix that down to a separate track. You can see the first ones here are a lot louder and then it scales its way down. Then I cut up all these samples and loaded them into the MPC. Okay, then in the MPC, I went into the samples tab and there are three layers in here currently, the soft, the medium, and the loud. And I loaded those samples into here and went to pan and velocity. And for the soft one, I had it go from zero to 59. For the medium, 59 to 99. This is the velocity levels. And the last one from 100 to 127. You could definitely play with these nuances. It's just how I chose to do that. So that when I'm hitting it soft, I'm getting the softest sample. When I hit it medium, it's triggering that one and the loudest one. They're pretty similar, so there's not going to be a lot of dramatic difference in there, but it is there. When I use my own samples like this, I tend to turn down the velocity sensitivity a little bit. I have it down to 117 instead of 127, so that way it's not getting too quiet when I'm hitting it soft because the samples already have differences in volume because of how they were processed, if you remember from that other screen. So I don't want to overdo it. Anyways, so there you go. There's four ways that I make my drums more expressive. Hopefully this has been helpful to you and you pick something up here. If you did, consider hitting the like button. And if you want to catch up on the whole series of Force Fridays, hit the subscribe button as well.